Uh, so now we're just going to create some effects. Uh, so we have some nice kind of particles coming out the side here and coming out the side here. So we're going to make right click and make a new particle system. We're just going to call this kind of FX um, hologram smoke. We double click this and we'll just drag it straight into our scene. And the first thing we're going to do is just change. Um, in fact, we'll just rotate this round 90 degrees. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll go right click and we'll go location, initial location, because at the moment they're all spawning in one point. So what we want to do is say add 150 to Y and that will make them all spawn direct in basically a line straight up and just along that line and just move in that direction. Um, so with that made, we'll just jump straight into making a material for this. And we'll call this FX Hollow Smoke Mat. And in here, we're going to set this to be unlit and maybe translucent as well. And what we're going to want to do is I should already have some alphas in here. So I'm just going to use something like that. So I'll make sure you have access to these in the tutorial, by the way. Um, so with that, we will then add. Um, a particle color node. Now basically what this does is this will allow us to control um, the color and like the opacity from within our particle system as well. So in order to do that we're going to add a multiply. So for example to control the opacity we drop the, the alpha slot and then that and then dump that into opacity. So now we are using this image and we're combining it with the alpha control in here. So that means we can have it like fade in and then kind of fade out. And we could do the same with the color as well. So if I just add a color node, then another multiply and we'll drop that into there and that into there and then that into emissive color. And basically that is going to give us that kind of same level of control. It means that we can control the color in here, but we can also control the color over life in here. So we could have it go from like blue to red. We'll just save that. And hopefully that should be all, all we need. Like really bad a basic material, but enough for us to work with. So the first thing we do, I tend to want to work with particle systems just to work my way down this list and then add any nodes that are required. So first of all, we obviously need to put our material into there. So we'll drop that in. And you can see that's kind of loaded in. OK. And well, I can already see that it is using the alpha control in here, because if you watch, it kind of fades out over its lifetime. So the first thing is the actual lifetime. We've just got a min and max of one here. In fairness, it's not actually too bad. I, it's probably about right. Um, I'll probably just put that to 1.2 just to get a bit of variety in there. But um, The next thing we need is the size, so initial size. They're all the same size at the moment, which I think we could definitely do with some variety. So maybe if we just set our max to 50 on each of X, Y, and Z, then we just get some variety in our particle size. In fact, I might even just increase that to, say, 30. And back to 60. Bear in mind, you can lock accesses here, so you only need to enter for um, X. Okay, initial velocity. Again, it's not actually too bad. They are kind of moving up and down a little bit. That's why we have minus 10, minus 10. Then we have 50 to 100 there. I might just um, put that to 10 and 10 just to show you. See that it's just controlling it, the speed as it moves down here. And we probably want to have those quite close to quite close together. I'm not really too bothered about having much on this, so I might just bring that down to two, minus two, minus two, or two. So obviously we can't lock axis because we've got different kind of speed settings on that. Right, so before I do the color over life, we want to add some rotation control. So let's put initial rotation in. And what that'll do is that will just apply kind of random rotation when the particles first spawn. 
And then if we right click and go rotation rate, and we do initial rotation rate, we can also set this to say 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and you see how the particles are now rotating a little bit. Maybe if we do that even less, like so. Okay, I might also just go back to my initial location and just put that down to say 140, like so. Right, next is the like really important one here. Um, sorry, in fact, let me show you one other thing. If I go to spawn here, I can actually increase the amount of particles that spawn. So maybe I will just rub that up a little bit because there's quite a few er areas there where nothing is kind of coming in. So I can set that to 40. So let's go to color over life then. Um, so the first thing we can control here is the actual color. It's a bit of a not the a, a bit of a crappy layout. Obviously, they're releasing a new particle editor soon, which will make this easier to kind of view. But just to explain what's going on, in value is zero. That means when the particles first spawn. Out value is one. That means when the particles die. So if I drop red into here, you'll see they start off red and then they go to that white. So what I might do is just a little tint of red in here. I think it'll be make it a bit more interesting to kind of look at. And on the out value here, I might just add like just a little hint of blue. And then if we scroll down to alpha over life, this is where we can control the color, the sorry, the opacity over life. Now at the moment, what's going on? We have two array elements. The first point is in value is when the particle is born. It's fully the particles are fully visible. And then out value is one. That's when the particles die. Um, they out value is zero, so they're fully invisible. I'm going to add an element in here, so we've now got three. So on my first one, where the particles are born, I'm going to set that to zero, so they're completely invisible. And then I'm going to set this one to 0.5, so halfway through their life, I'm going to make them say 0.5. And then on my last point, I'm going to set my in value to one, so that's the end of life. Again, I'm going to keep that with zero. So the particles are invisible, become visible, and then go invisible again. Now I'm going to put that to point two, so that means earlier on they start to become visible. And I'm going to reduce the visibility down even more. Because really, I just want this to be like a subtle, subtle effect. So yeah, that's not looking too bad. Might take that down even less. No, I think uh, point one is probably about right. So with that done, what we can do, I think that's kind of it really. We can just select that again, clone it, rotate it to 270, sorry, to 180. So it should just enter this manually and stick that into place there. And you can kind of see that having its effect. Um, what I might do is bring that a little bit down to there. And if I just go to my uh, lifetime here, I am actually going to put that, that to 0.8 and that to 1. So it's kind of doing that. So yeah, just mess around with these until you're kind of happy with them. Um, It's really kind of happy with it. And obviously another thing you can do here, if I just load up this, um, you can also try out obviously different um, different alpha textures. So I'll provide you with all those ones that I've got there and you can just kind of try out different ones. So I'll probably do prefer that one because it's a bit more subtle. Okay, so that's the particle system done. The last thing we want to do is just animate the sequencer. So I'm just going to make a new sequencer And in this, I'm just going to add a pod. And in my initial transform, I'm just going to put my scale. And I'm going to set my scale to 0. And then I'm going to go so there. I'm going to scale this model up to the size I want it to be. And if that will do, I'll just hit S to add a key. 
So it kind of now pops into view. Probably a little bit fast. Well, it is good that it's fast. And um, what I'm going to do is, because I press S, it added a rotation key in there. I'm just going to leave that and that, because I want the rotation to be kind of consistent throughout. So I don't want any more keys I'm going to need. So I'm going to go to zero, I'm going to add rotation, and I'm going to go to the end of my level sequence. Um, you can use the tabs here, by the way. And no. I'm going to add another rotation key. And I'm just going to rotate this guy, say, 360 degrees. Make sure it has to add a key. Again, I've added those keys in there, but yeah, so I probably should have just hit it on rotate. So now if we just hit play, you see that comes in. At the moment, you can see it's kind of speeding up and slowing down. So what we need to do is make sure we set our keys to linear. So I'm just going to load this here. I'm going to go to my rotation. I'm going to select my keys. And you can see, because it's gradually getting steeper and then leveling out, it's going from slow to fast back to slow. So if we just want to set this to linear, um, like that, that will now be a constant speed with that rotation. So, it's so strange. Okay, so. Yeah, that's kind of it there. So we've got our particle effects in there, we've got our, uh, our kind of glowing edge on that too. Um, and obviously you've got all the kind of control that you need over this. So again with the smoke, what I might do is just come back in, and that's probably all I'm going to tweak, but just to get a bit more of that going in there. Okay, so that's that.